JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for April the 8th. I am Harlambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher or, or unchanged against uh, all but two of the other G10 currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian session Thursday. It gained versus NZD, GBP, AUD, and CAD in that order, while it was found virtually unchanged against uh, the Euro, the Japanese Yen, and SEC. The greenback underperformed only against NOC and CHF. Now, the relative strength of the US dollar and the weakness in the commodity linked to Aussie, Kiwi and Looney suggest that uh, markets traded in a risk-off fashion yesterday and today in Asia. Turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that uh, most uh, major EU indices ended their trading in the red, while UK's FTSE edged 0.91% uh, uh, higher. In the US, the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 gained 0.05 and 0.15%, but Nasdaq slid 0.07%. Market sentiment was improved even more during the Asian session today. Although Japan's Nikkei 225 slid 0.08%, China's Shanghai Composite, Hong Kong's Hang Seng, and South Korea's KOSPI gained 0.42%, 1.59%, and 0.14% uh, uh, respectively. Yesterday, the main event uh, on the economic agenda was uh, the minutes uh, from the latest uh, FOMC gathering. The minutes confirmed that bond purchases will continue until substantial further progress towards the committee's maximum employment and price stability goals have been made, and that it would take some time until that happens. They also confirmed that members see any boost in inflation, in, uh, in inflation this year as temporary. This is in line what we, with uh, what we've been expecting and adds uh, more credence to our view that the Fed is unlikely to start policy normalization anytime soon. After all, in the minutes it was also revealed that a number of participants highlighted the importance to clearly communicate uh, their assessment of uh, progress towards uh, their goals well in advance of the time when it would warrant a policy change. Now, we get uh, more minutes uh, today, this time from the ECB. At its uh, latest meeting, this bank decided to accelerate its pandemic emergency purchase program in order to stop any unwarranted rise uh, in, uh, in bond yields. Although other major central banks share the view that the latest rise in bond yields around the globe just represents a healthy economic recovery, that's not the case for the ECB. Rising bond yields in Europe have partly spilled, to sp uh, spilled over from US markets reacting to President Biden's uh, massive fiscal stimulus. Therefore, with Eurozone's economic recovery still being fragile, we will, scan, we will scan the minutes for hints and clues as to whether SMB officials stand ready to ease their monetary policy further if Eurozone bond yields remain elevated. Last week, President Lagarde noted that investors could test the bank's willingness to rein in rising borrowing costs as much as they want, and, th and thus we believe that the minutes will show that policymakers will not hesitate to do more if needed. Now, with the Fed pledged to keep its policy extra loose for longer, and with ECB, uh, and with ECB perhaps ready to ease further if necessary, we believe that equities are likely to continue trending north. On top of that, inflation fears uh, have been uh, easing lately, resulting in a pullback in U.S. Treasury yields, and thus we see the case for the U.S. dollar to trade lower despite its relative strength yesterday. 
However, market sentiment may not improve immediately as investors may, st may stay reluctant to, to drastically increase uh, their risk exposure ahead of the earnings uh, season. Now, as uh, for the rest of today's events, besides the ACMP meeting minutes, we also get the US initial jobless claims for last week, which are forecast to have declined to 680,000 from 719,000. Tonight, during the Asian session Friday, China's CPI and PPI for March are due to be released. The CPI rate is expected to have rebounded to 0.2% year over year from minus 0.2% in February, while the PPI rate is anticipated to have risen to 3.5% year over year from 1.7%. As for the speakers, we will get to hear from Fed Chair Jerome Powell, but we don't expect any fireworks. We expect him to reiterate his dovish stance noting that it is too early to start discussing monetary policy normalization. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.